Hello and welcome to section 5, Testing Reactive GUIs and Web Servers and Clients. In this section, we're going to be unit testing RxPy, Tornado, and a GUI. In this video, we're going to be writing a unit test to test a basic reactive flow with RxPy. Let's begin. We're going to be writing test cases for reactive code in Python. So our test case here is called TestRx and we're starting with test interval and we're going to be writing a test case for an observable interval. So we have the scheduler, the test scheduler simulates time so that all actions occur immediately so tests don't take a very very long time to run and we're going to set an interval time of 300 and then we're going to create a factory function called create which will actually return the observable interval with the interval time set and set on it will be created onto that scheduler we're going to say that the subscribe time is 300 so every 300 milliseconds the interval will send out a value and the first time we're going to be subscribing to that interval is at the time 300 and the time that we are disposing of our subscriber is going to be at 1.4 seconds, 1400 milliseconds. So we should see a few values come through the interval before we unsubscribe. And then we grab the results after we start the scheduler by passing in the create factory and we see created equals one, which means that the interval observable will be created almost immediately and the subscribe time will be 300 milliseconds and then the dispose time will be 400 milliseconds. So right away you can see how easy it is to reason about this and to know when things will happen and it's almost like writing synchronous code but you know that this is actually asynchronous. So the results will be all the values that are returned out of the interval and they'll be in the form of on next or on complete and so on. So we're going to print out what those results messages are and then we're going to assert that the results messages are equal to reactive test dot on next. So at 600 milliseconds, we expect a value, the value of zero. So this is the first time that the interval has been run. So reactive test and rx dot testing, the module, have a bunch of different utility functions and classes like this to use. Reactive test is the next it'll check the next value at a particular time for a particular value. So in this case, we're subscribing at 300 milliseconds and we're checking for a value at 600 milliseconds and we're looking for the value of zero. And at the time of 900 milliseconds, we're looking for a value of one. After that, we're looking for a value of 1200 or a time of 1200 and a value of two. And that's basically it for that test. So the interval test will create an interval every 300 milliseconds of fires. It'll be disposed of at 1400 milliseconds. So that means there are three values. So we use reactive test dot on next at 600, 900 and 1200 milliseconds. And we check for progressively increasing values. So you can do this with any other interval as well. So if you have an interval running every 20 milliseconds, you can look for an on next value at 20, 40, 60, 80, and so on, and look for particular values. If you're mapping, you can look for a different type of value. So now let's look at writing a test case for a custom subject. So in our previous videos, we've been using custom subjects to stream data however we want. So we can pass on next in and different values. So again, we have the test scheduler, and this custom subject will be similar to the GUI program that we've written already. So we're keeping track of a mouse click stream. Right now it's set to none. And we're going to keep track of the click count. We define a factory function again. And this one is going to take in the scheduler and the state. So this test scheduler and then the state is the current state of the simulation for timing. So we're going to define the mouse click stream as a subject. And then we're going to define another function, which is the actual click. And again, it needs a scheduler and a state. And you'll see why this is important in a little while. And so every time there's a click, we're going to say on next 
to the mouse click stream subject. We also have a factory function for subscribe, and that also takes in a scheduler and a state. And within it, we define something called update, and it takes a parameter i. And i is just another value. We're going to ignore it. We're just going to increase the click count by one. And then we're going to subscribe with that update function to the mouse click stream. So every single time there's a click, we're going to increase the click count so that we can keep track of how many clicks have happened. So we use the test scheduler. All the other schedulers have a similar interface, so you can schedule things at certain times. In this case, the test scheduler is a simulation. So at the time of one, we're going to be calling the create function and it will be creating the mouse click stream subject. And then we're going to schedule another event and we're going to schedule it at the absolute time of two. So at one millisecond, it will create the mouse click stream subject. At two milliseconds, we're going to be clicking and then it'll pass the clicked value through the mouse click stream. And because we have a subscriber that has the click count, we're going to be able to check how many times that click has happened. The next thing we schedule is the subscribe itself. So immediately after we subscribe to the mouse click stream and we're going to schedule another click. So there's a click before we subscribe and then there's a click after so that we can check the value and make sure that it is not three. We have a second click here that happens after the subscribe. So the click that happened before the subscribe should not be counted. So again, we use variable results to capture all the results out of the scheduler. The test scheduler will do this for us. So we just have to call start and then we can print out the results so we can actually compare things and see how it looks like for debugging. And what we're going to assert is that the click count is equal to two. So if we go to the console, we can do Python tests, test rx.py. And you can see in the first test case, we have an on completed and we have an on next and another on next and another on next for the other test case. So that's how you test a reactive program. You use the scheduler to schedule events at certain times and you use the test scheduler to run this scheduling much faster and to simulate time. And then you schedule absolute times for certain events to happen and then you can check the results. You can check the values of the observables using results equals scheduler.start. And that's basically it.